Hello and welcome to using the macro settings on the Lumix. That's the Lumix FZ2000, FZ2500 and the FZH1, depending where you live. Enjoy. Don't panic, this is all the stuff I use for macros. That bit you'll recognise. It's the Lumix FZ2000, FZ2500, FZH1. This fits on the front of the lens because once the lens is out, it doesn't move again. And it's great for putting over, say, a model. <laughs> but I mean a model that size. You can tell, well, my fingers are not very big. But if you put her and a photographer and a cinematographer or anything else with your camera on top, and this fitted on top of your camera with your flash gun fitted on a tripod or handheld like such when this says you take your photo bang your light is here and it's all subdued lighting even in bright sunlight and it works if you're taking a shot on a leave it stops it moving if you've got a little fly or something you want to see or the insides or stamens of the flower and it's only the bottom of a bleach bottle I think it cost me about 44 pence for the bottle <laughs> there a little tripod which goes up and down Clamp in case I want to put my lighting somewhere else on a branch nearby for the flash gun. A fold up hood which goes over that glass there. Because if you're working down a ROP, you can't see in the EVF in the electronic viewfinder, and that gives you nice shading. and a remote for activating the camera because normally I am on a tripod I very seldom hand hold my age you know the hands shake <laughs> and last but not least that screws onto my tripod and it's multi adjustable and I can zoom in turn it the other way and then you'll see it do it zoom in on the subject very finely and also I can zoom right and left on the subject and you might not need any of these <laughs> and I've also invested in some Kodak close-up filters, buy one, buy two, I don't mean buy them but pay for them, that's a multiplication factor, I buy one, I buy two, I buy four and I buy ten, I like the buy ten, it's brilliant, <laughs> now I'll show you links at the beginning of the video or the write-up to these, this the remote and the hood. I can't show you one for the flash because this is an old Pentax flash I have had for probably oh, 20 years. <laughs> and you'll see on the back it says full, which means it delivers full power all the time. I don't alter the setting. I alter the camera setting or the distance. 
And basically that's it folks, that's the toys. Next I'll show you how I take pictures of these things so you've got a better idea of how I do it. You find your own way, you might be able to hand hold. And just, I used to do it by switching the camera on obviously, focusing, and just when I thought I got it right, click, take a photo. It worked half the time. But now I've got older and I've got a little bit more patience and a lot more time. Thank you. Hope you enjoy what follows. Now you can see the setup I'm using here. I've got the remote, camera, flash gun charged up, and the power to the flash gun there. And I'm going to hold it like that. So this diffuses my light. You could use a, a stand or a lever or whatever you want. I uh, can do it like this because I'm doing it in my kitchen. And on the wall there is one of those totally little models. Now, switching the camera on. Where it says on the back of your camera AF. I'm pressing AF and... I am an AF macro. I'll accept that. I'll just focus. You might just about be able to see it. There's a wee man on there. Now what I'm doing is I'm holding the flash gun about two foot up. I shall half press the remote so this focuses. There, you heard it go beep in a green flash. And that's taking a photo. I should go into replay and let you see it. There you are. I'm just going to move this camera. There. And we'll try to focus in on that. But I think you can see that and I'll, I'll crop in on it. And that is taken with ordinary macro. Now we'll go back in again to AF. No, we better get out of replay first. Now we're going to AF and we'll take macro zoom. Now you can come back a bit now. And now you should be able to see the little photographer on the wall there. And I'm going to zoom in. And you can focus in a lot more, and all you do is just half press the shutter. And if it goes beep, it's fine. That's its maximum, so I'm going to push it in. Until the wee model there fills the screen, and half press the shutter. And it still focuses, so it won't beep beep. But if it beep beeps, it flashes a red light, and it tell, that's telling you, you can't do that. So, I'm coming up here, I'm going to half press the shutter on the remote, and you'll hear it go beep and flash green on there. There. And we'll have a look at your photos, see what we've got, and there it is again. So it's pretty cool. Now I'm going to use the extension filters that fit on the end. I've got the little camera in my hand and you can see two models, well a model and the photographer on the wall and on this camera the FZ2000 you can see I've got a filter. It's a by 10 and down there, I've got one of my Sony's taking a shot of up here. <laughs> and there's the filter that's on it. Now I'm not going to work with flash. So I only have available light here. But we're going to see what we can do. 
Now that's by 10 and I think it's focused okay. We'll see in a minute. It is. I'm going to try a shot, see what happens. Now we'll go to replay and there it is. That's not half bad. I can cope with that. I can alter the lighting and tune up the colours when I get it into post-production. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. Now this, the mode it's in is macro zoom. And that's as far as it will go. Now we rely on controlling the distance. I'm going to take a shot of that anyway. Just to show you, it's focused, we go. I've got the kitchen light on, I think you'll see it in there, the reflection. Now, if I undo that a touch and we'll... I'll stop periodically and check it's focusing. It is, you heard it go beep. I'm going to try focusing again and it's accepted it so I'm going to take a shot and then we'll have a look that's not bad it wants to be a bit lighter but I can live with that as well so I'll lighten it up a little bit for the next one <laughs> And we're on 3.2 at 2.8 rather. And I shall go two point five at two point eight. Now you can see, yeah, this is why you need flash. I'll show you how close it is to the subject. So if you had flash where this camera is now, you wouldn't have to be working with the settings I'm using. Now we'll go in and have a look. A bit too light. A bit too light for me, but I can tone it down. But for the benefit of the video, I shall alter the settings. Fifth of a second. It's accepted the focus. It's taking the shot. And that's it on replay. Can't be bad. So that's all the different settings. Now you have to remember, when you are putting a, the filters on the front of the lens, remember to take any filters you have on like I have a UV, take it off. You don't need it. Now, if you want to be ambitious, and I like being ambitious sometimes, I'm going to put the flash back on. And switch it on, of course, because I have to wait for it to charge up. And then I'm going to come out of manual mode. And we'll go into program mode. Now you can see it doesn't like being that close which is why I prefer manual. Come back a bit. No. Try again. And now 
I'm just going to show you how far away we are. Even with that by 10 on, you have to go into manual to get the full benefits of it. And why have such a beautiful camera and not use manual? I say. <laughs> All right, we'll pre-focus and bang. And it's far too light, I can tell. Even being in program mode, there you are, it's far too light. Useless. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll take another one through the diffuser, homemade diffuser, remember? It's only a beer bottle top. And it does fit on front of the lens just there. And that will be nicely. Do it lovely. I'll show these photos that we've done, even the ones that don't work out very well, when I do the video. And then you'll know and see everything I've used on my setup. I'm just quite happy to handhold it. And then you can go right in. We'll put the flash on. And that's your lot. Now here are the two pages on the manual. Stop it, start it, read it, see what it says, the settings. There's only the three on, off or macro, <laughs> in macro, sorry. And read where it doesn't work and stop the page. Not available in these cases. And you can see where you can't use it. Can't use it in manual focus and so on and so forth. Not in RAW. It doesn't work in RAW. And now we're looking at the stills. There's my little doggy on my computer just to show the size of him. And there's a by 10 close up. And as you can see, the only thing in focus is his nose. Everything else, including the hair on his face, is out of focus. Very shallow depth of field. This is my little model stuck to the wallpaper that you saw me taking the stills of. And you know how tiny these are. They're smaller than a fingernail. So they're all very good. <laughs> There's a couple. Nah, could have done with being uh, different. But I've, I can doctor any of them up in post-production, so I never worry. But there was one grossly overexposed. But I've showed it. It's coming up in a second and you can see. And these were the different settings you saw me using. And there's the one that was grossly overexposed where I moved the tripod back. This shows the very shallow depth of field. Everything above where the numbers are is out of focus. You make that work for you. They are. The focus point was midway, so everything in front and behind is going out of focus. I didn't win anything on the lottery ticket. The focus point was where it says health lottery. And as you can see, the numbers in front and the wording above is out of focus. Graveyard, you can see the white square oblong I've put round the bit I closed right in on. These were something I seldom do handheld. Shock horror, I can actually do it. This is a gravestone and as you can see my point of focus is at the front and the rest runs out of focus. And you make this work for you. That bench, you can see the totally little plaque on it, very small and there it is three or four times life size and then my phone you can see the little bit that's in focus and you can see a heck of a lot that's out of focus <laughs> the depth of field is not very good and the same there but you make it work for you the background isn't too important you've seen how I do it now go and experiment yourself you've got the basics you know how the settings go your focusing modes on the back, your choices are off, macro zoom, and zoom. Read any pages I've put up with this video because it doesn't work in raw. I've gone to fine. 
If you put it in raw, it doesn't work on AF macro. You have to find out what it won't work on rather than what it will work on. But you've seen I've used program mode. I wouldn't normally. I don't use any automatic settings. I'm very happy using manual. Each to their own. And I like shooting in RAW. So I'm a bit inclined to use this setup, but not in macro. I just stay in the ordinary settings and then in post-production I blow it up. Take the shot at 18 million pixels and then blow it up and get a 5 to 10 million pixel shot. Uh, megapixel to show. That's all you're going to get for now. Thanks for watching. If you like me waffling on, give us a thumbs up <laughs> uh, and subscribe and then you'll know what else this idiot's going to do next. Thank you. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It's going to be a long, long video as this. It's 21 Go on 21 and a bit seconds. I hope you can stick with it and get right to the end. La di ta ti ta 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 ta